just bear with me for a moment. Okay, I hope everybody can see that. Seeing, seeing nods here, so that's great. Um, so welcome to our information session about the Activate program. Thanks for taking a bit of time to, uh, to join us this morning. What we're gonna do is just talk a little bit about the program itself. We'll talk a little bit about the participation and the structure of the program. Wellington's gonna speak a little bit about the key themes of Activate, and then uh, we'll have some time at the end for a few questions if there are any that you have. So we'll jump right in and kind of pose the question here, what is Activate? So Activate, you see the ACT is highlighted there. It stands for Activating Community Tourism, and it's a program that was co-developed by GMIST and the Cody Institute at St. Francis Xavier University in Antigonish, Nova Scotia. And it's a program that's been developed, but it's still being developed and it's still evolving as we go. This will be our third offering of Activate, and each offering has been slightly different based on feedback that we've gotten and things that we've seen to try to keep the program evolving and current and keep improving it. It's really about a different type of mindset. So Activate uses a strengths-based approach using asset-based community develop community-led development or ABCD as a foundation for the learning. So we invite you to come into Activate with a lot of curiosity. The program will challenge past practices. It'll allow you to try out some new approaches to community development. And collaboration is a really key element in the learning process. So we certainly invite you to be willing to share, give feedback, and you'll find that you'll learn a lot from the others who are participating in the program. I just want to say a couple of things about what the program is not. So Activate is not a step-by-step -step process. So not everyone in the program or every community in the program will necessarily follow the same path or achieve the same outcome. It's not a destination development process, so you won't end the program with a lengthy plan um, that you're, you want to implement, but you will have some actionable items. The focus is on building capacity, developing skill sets, and testing out some tools. It's also not a one-size-fits-all approach, and there's no wonderful magic bullet that will be presented that will solve all the issues and challenges. There is a framework, but you'll see that there's lots of room for exploration as well. And you'll be introduced to a range of tools and resources that you can take and apply in your own work, in your own community, and perhaps even in your own neighborhood. You'll see from the process that ABCD is not a set of tools or a template. It's actually more of a way of being. So who is the program for? It's for community leaders, change makers, community builders, and practitioners across different sectors who are passionate and see the potential in their communities and want to make a difference. It's for people who want to grow their networks, meet new people, and also grow their skill sets and for people who are ready to explore a different approach. So those who are curious and who can come in, who open-minded, engaged in the community or willing to engage in the community. The network will enrich the learning and you'll find that sharing the knowledge will help uh, provide a lot of information to help you face opportunities and challenges. Community development can be a little bit of a lonely space uh, when you're working on your own in a community or a region or working as part of a small team. And we really hope that Activate can provide an avenue to help everyone thrive through building that strong network and sharing the knowledge. The program is about building community by community. So communities will be selected to participate based on their application. And you can find the application right on our website at gmis.ca. We encourage you to tell us about your community when you apply and tell us the types of things that you're interested in and tell us about the things that make your community special. So be as complete as you can when you apply. We'll invite a cluster of three to five people of your choosing uh, from each community to participate. So there's no prescribed makeup for the cluster from your community. You can choose who you'd like to have participate in the program. Uh, based on people that you're already working with, organizations you're working with, or organizations that you'd like to work with. So there's no uh, predetermined list of people from your community, but we're looking for three to five as a cluster. 
And this is open to communities all across Canada. Uh, it is a Canadian program at the moment, so communities within Canada. And it's not meant, Activate is not meant to add to your workload. What we're trying to do here is to help you be able to use some tools and learning in the work that you're doing or the work that you'd like to do in your community. So it's not meant to add a whole big other list of to do's uh, to your list. It's meant to actually enhance and help the work that you're doing. Um, your cluster will have learning opportunities in the program and support over a four month period in this offering of Activate. Um, and of course, you're welcome throughout the process to engage with other members of, of your community. So you'll have a cluster of three to five people, but we certainly encourage as you move through the Activate program to be working with and engaging with others and sharing learning beyond just that three to five person cluster in your community. So each community will create their own action plan through the process and each will be unique. As we've said, there's no uh, magic bullet and you'll create an action plan based on your own goals and objectives. And that will come out through the learning and activate and in particular in the in-person component that we will have. GMIS covers most of the costs. So the cost to your community is fairly minimal for the program. GMIS will cover the cost of travel to and from Grossmorn for the in-person learning. It'll cover the meals and activities while you're in Grossmorn and also the costs associated with the program itself. Uh, for those selected, um, there will be some minimal costs, for example, travel to and from your home airport, uh, maybe some meals while you're in transit and that sort of thing. But GMIS does cover the majority of the costs for communities. So now to talk a little bit about the structure of the program. It is structured using a blended learning approach. So recognizing that everyone learns a little bit differently there are going to be hands-on uh, components to the program. There are experiential components. There are some online sessions and lots of peer-to-peer -peer learning. So lots of different ways to learn and absorb and share the information. The program is open to uh, participants across sectors in different types of organizations. It could be government agencies, community-based organizations, community associations, municipalities, could be a sports organization. It's open to a whole variety of different types of uh, organizations and different participants. Perhaps you're an interested citizen in your community and that's okay too. The deadline to apply is September 9th and you can find that application right on our website at gmis.ca. And then in October, once the selections are made, we'll have two online sessions. One is an onboarding session, which is really kind of an introduction and an opportunity to get to know your, your, the other participants and which other communities are participating. And we'll also have an intro to ABCD or asset-based community-led development session leading into our in-person learning. So in November, during the first week of November, we'll have five days of in-person learning in Grosmore National Park in Western Newfoundland. And during that week, it'll be a bit more of a deeper dive into the strengths and the assets of your own community and lots of opportunities, of course, to learn from the other communities. The learning will be very immersive and very hands-on uh, and we think you'll find it quite interesting. After November through December and January, the participants will be working on a project or an initiative of your own choosing, something that you've talked about during the in-person week in Grossmore. And that could be uh, something like a policy review, it could be a small scale project, it could be um, looking at something in the community that you'd like to do. It's really up to the communities to decide what sort of small scale project that they would like to work on. And in December and January, we'll have some monthly kind of informal Zoom check-in sessions where you can bring forward things that you're working on, you can talk about ideas, or maybe talk about successes that you've been having or challenges that you've been having. And it's an opportunity for GMIS, Cody, and um, all of the participants to kind of provide some feedback or some guidance, or maybe answer some questions that you have as you're working on your, your, your small scale project. And then in January, you'll submit a final reflection based on everything that you've learned and everything that you've experienced during the program. And once the program is completed, we'll have a little bit of an online celebration and you'll receive a certificate from St. Francis Xavier University in activating community tourism and asset-based and community-led development approach. So you will receive a completion certificate. So that's a little bit about the structure. 
Um, I'm going to turn it over to Wellington, and he's going to talk a little bit about the Cody Institute and some of the key themes that will be explored during the Activate program. Hello, everyone. Wellington here from Cody Institute at Senefax. Um, I lead the program in asset base and community -led development, um, aka ABCD here at Cody. And uh, I'm also one of uh, the facilitators for Activate. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you all, and thank you so much for taking time to enjoy this uh, to join this session. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Cody, but Cody Institute is a global leader in citizen-led or community-led asset-based community development. Uh, the institute is named in honor of Reverend Dr. Moses Cody, one of the founders of the Anagonish movement, um, so uh, a people's movement right, for uh, economic and social justice that began here in Nova Scotia during the 1920s. And uh, Dr. Cody really believed that people could use what they have to secure what they have not. Um, so at Cody, ABCD is more than just a thematic area of teaching, research, and capacity building, but also a foundation of all the work we do. So our vision is really to foster um, a citizen-powered communities. Uh, in other words, communities, they are healthy and thriving uh, because the members, they take uh, their role as citizens and the community builders, builders seriously. Um, activate is, is uh, built upon those principles, the ABCD principles. And um, so let's see some, some of the key themes here. Um, so participants will be equipped with tools to uncover stories of citizen-led development in any community. Um, so this not only helps people to realize how communities they function, but also highlight uh, what is unique and compelling about uh, their places and also its people. Uh, participants will also be introduced to principles uh, that empower them to drive their own development and uh, learn how to enable institutions uh, to to support and invest in what communities are already doing and are passionate about. Uh, next slide, um, Nora, please. And uh, although principles are maybe the most important aspect of ABCD, I, I would say, uh, but participants will also gain practical tools and methods to map community strengths and assets and identify community-based tourism opportunities that can be realized by drawing on and mobilizing uh, these, these assets, these trends. And uh, well, I wish you the very best with your applications. And I really look forward to the opportunity to collaborate with you. So thank you so much, appreciate it. Over to you, Nora. Thanks, Wellington. That is basically it for our overview um, of the Activate program. And we've got written here, join us on a learning journey. And really, this is all about learning. And we know that learning is a continuous process. Community development is a continuous process. It's not something that starts and finishes. Um, so while the program is a four-month um, offering, we know that there's lots of learning that's going to happen um, after that as well, especially as you build your network through the program. Um, so we invite you to um, think about it. Uh, think about others in your community or your organization who you might want to invite to be part of that cluster and be part of the learning journey. If you do have questions, uh, we'll take a few minutes here in a moment, uh, but if you do have questions after this, after you've kind of had a chance to think about it, please feel free to email us. Info at gmis.ca on the screen here is the best way to reach us, um, and we'll do our best to get back to you um, quickly if you're working on your application. But um, we invite you to be curious. We invite you to apply. Um, it's a great learning opportunity, a great networking opportunity, and uh, we really hope to uh, to see some of your applications. So I'll close off and stop sharing here. And if anyone has a question, um, please feel free to, to unmute or uh, pop it into the chat and we'll do our best to answer. Thank you so much. I have, I have a very simple question for you. Um, approximately how many people are, are accepted into the cohort?
It will uh, depend on the size of the clusters. Um, as we said, we are inviting three to five. Uh, we'll probably it will it will probably have about five to six communities depending on the size of the cluster. So it could be a little more than that um, if some of the clusters are a little bit smaller. Thank you. I have a question as well. Um, I am a tourism development consultant and just looking up names um, uh, as you're speaking of other people on the call, there are a lot of small business owners here. So I'm just wondering like, where do we, like those who might not be representing a municipality per se, um, but are interested in growing our skills and understandings and potential in um, community led tourism, like do is there a place for us, uh, I suppose, in, within the program? Want to answer that one, Jonathan? Sure. Um, at this point in time, I would say um, when we have had uh, sort of those support agents, uh, either consultants or um, people coming from chambers of commerce, um, economic development officers, they've come actually as part of uh, a community they've been involved in versus uh, a separate learning piece. I will say this though, there, there is opportunities if you look on the, uh, in Wellington, you may be able to talk to this, uh, the uh, ABCD learning uh, that's available through Cody. Uh, there is a specific uh, number of different programs that are accessible to individuals as well. I don't know if you can share any of that, Wellington. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have um, certificates in asset-based and commitment-led development that is more like general um, for those who are interested to learn more about the approach. Uh, one of them is online, is a six-week program uh, meeting sometimes once, sometimes twice uh, a week. And usually uh, you're going to have, you're going to be exposed to people from all over the world uh, who are doing this kind of work. Um, um, and also we have an in-person program. This is more uh, intensive. Uh, that will be from two to three weeks here uh, in person at Cody. And, um, and the program is, is, is very, very hands-on. Um, we really want you to leave the program and apply right away. So if you guys want more information about what is coming up in terms of online or even in person, I'm going to leave my email here in the chat. And, uh, and also Cody's uh, website. And I'm more than glad to chat about it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. There's a, a couple of questions over in the chat. Um, there was one, can you provide an example of a community program implemented after completing Activate? And is there an online resource to see their work? Great question. Here's the here's the true skinny on all of this. There's an insane amount of really cool stuff happening all over the place and we can't get rid of any of you. So four months turns into 18 months, turns into 24 months. Uh, the beautiful thing about all of this is that the learning opportunity is shared across all of you and we convened some space and the beautiful thing is that all you beautiful people have filled it with knowledge and learning and sharing that has been an incredibly humbling and inspiring uh, piece of work. Uh, probably the best thing that I, in my 30 years, have ever been involved with uh, from that side of things. With that said, there's some great things that are happening in regards to um, sort of different initiatives that we've seen uh, sort of transpire. Some have been, you know, you might look at it and you say, oh, like, where is this going? What's this got to do with tourism? But it's it's really actually sort of true to that adage that we have about a great place to live is a great place to visit. So some of the things that we, you know, we've seen uh, manifest in these communities are, are things around um, active living uh, with trails and things like that. We've seen some different things around youth engagement. That's probably been one of the biggest and most positive things that we've seen sort of emerge out of this is when we talk about tourism, we have this general, I don't know, default mechanism where we put everybody in a hotel room, we invite some provincial folks that talk about some tourism statistics, 
we've got you know a few of the operators around and we have the same conversation over and over and over again and all of a sudden this process opened up this opportunity in one community where we had the young people leading the conversation about what they wanted in their community so the examples that we've seen is is really how do you create um, new measurements and new outcomes that are attached to what you want in your community. So it's it's really, you can either sit back and let tourism dictate to you, or as a community, you can say, this is what we want. And this is actually the authentic experience that we want visitors to have. And I think that's the, the key piece here is how do you take all of those concerns that you have in your, your community, but also all of those strengths, and how do you put them into this incredible opportunity to have conversations that actually lead to action. Let's be honest, how many of us have been involved in things where we go for a year having all these meetings, we get this strategy at the end and everybody is just dead at the end because then you've got to come up with the million dollars to implement it and make it all work to actually taking a step back and having real conversations and finding out what has meaning. And I, I laugh uh, about trying to get rid of all of you, you know, when we can't, uh, we ended up in Nebraska because a whole bunch of people wanted to see this stuff in action. And I will say, if you want to see this, go on the Nebraska Community Foundation uh, website and you will see this stuff in spades. But one of the things we learned down there was that, you know, in order for, for action to happen, it has to have meaning. And if it has meaning, it has value. If it has value, it gets done. And they were adamant down there of, of how they approach things. And whenever we went into a community, as an example, the first thing they showed us um, around their economic success, whether it be tourism, farming or whatever, was their early childhood education center. They said at the root of everything they would do in their community, if we could make families believe that their kids had a head start on life, that it would lead to business innovation, it would lead to tourism innovation. And it was an amazing thing to, to see and to experience. And as I said, uh, these things are different all over the place, but um, for anyone who has a bit more, more than happy to connect you with, uh, I wanna say past participants, but they're never past participants. So um, as you'll see, for those of you that are able to, uh, to join with us, uh, we bring in lots of those uh, Activate voices and they have become part of the facilitation group. Um, and as I said, they are leading lots of those conversations in that community of practice as well. That was a very long winded uh, answer to that question. So I apologize on that one. Um, let me just see here. Uh, yes, everyone that is accepted into the cluster, um, they will have to be in attendance in Gross Morn. So the idea here is that um, in, in previous groups, for example, they had three to five that attended, but in reality, their working group sometimes was 15 or more. So the whole idea here is that we need to be able to share these things across a wide swath of our community, because if it only resides with one or two people, the burnout level, the, the, just that, you know, piece of having to carry that whole important load is just impossible. And the opportunity here is to bring that back, to be able to share that learning widely. And we've done a number of different uh, things where the training has been replicated back in the community by uh, some of those that came to the training, but they've also, because now we've got people all over Southern Ontario and the Atlantic provinces, they've invited in some of those folks from the other activates and they've helped lead some of that. Just want to emphasize, this isn't about somebody coming in and facilitating something for you. This is about you having honest to God conversations with, with your friends and your neighbors. This isn't about somebody standing up in front of, uh, of your community eloquently facilitating, you know, that beautiful sort of blah, blah, blah. This is about being truthful and honest and, and real. And this is where the, the good stuff happens in community. Let's be honest. Happens in the coffee shop, happens in the bar, it happens when you go to pick up your mail at the post office. Um, what we've learned is these conversations need to happen where they need to happen. And that's never in a hotel room with a PowerPoint. Let's be honest. So um, there's lots of 
lots of different examples that you'll hear from from some of the activate folks uh, through that side. Uh, can you have a private public profit combined commercial local? Yes, yes, and yes. Like the mixture of people that have come in on this has been um, uh, been really cool. So we've had uh, groups that have come with provincial employees, uh, federal employees mixed into their community cohort. I think it's in those scenarios, it's where those um, sort of representatives are really embedded in the community and they're not just there representing some program, if that makes sense. What we're trying to do in the first iteration of this, when we had um, federal and provincial representatives that attended, it was quite eye-opening for them. And actually, you as participants pushed many of the new policies that have, have come into play in the last two years around how to shift from a very central program specific approach to things that are done to community, to have community having a greater voice in uh, having a say how we co-create these programs. How do we use public finances completely different? So why do we always have to fit from a community perspective into some federal or provincial program? Can we have a conversation about um, how we could work together to, to do things that have meaning to our community? and not work towards some organization or agency's themes or pillars, but things that have meaning in the community. So I think these are, are, are opportunities to, to sort of find people that you know you can work with. But at the end of the day, this is about um, making things better for your community. So how can tourism help your community flourish is, is the key, key thing here. Uh, da, da, da. Any other questions? I got a question. Go ahead, Doug. What um, what is the minimum of a cohort uh, that has to attend in uh, Newfoundland? Three. So we need three people that are dedicated to uh, to going on that trip, but our cohort can be bigger with the project outside of that trip. So. so so basically for the duration of the of the program that would then lead to the you know certificate piece which is a very secondary thing here overall uh, yeah. let's be honest um that would be to that three but all of the other things that you'd be doing you can you can have as many people as you want like this is really about taking lots of these things that you're going to learn and and basically playing around in the mud with it a little bit. Like if you're waiting for perfection on this, you're, you're always going to be waiting. And I think what we've seen is the three to five is a great um, sort of number to for decision making, for moving things forward, for sharing sort of that that opportunity and, and you know, and sometimes the burden. Um, but then how do you spiral it out? Because I will guarantee you, once you do this and you find some people that all of a sudden are like, well, holy cow, that was completely different from the normal experience I've had. I'd like to be part of this. You know, the whole hope here is that then you're able to start sharing this and, and, and you know, expanding on this. I think the other thing, too, that's important to remember is um, in terms of a, a, having that group and, of course, you can share with other people in your community, but having that kind of core group, it gives you a bit of support and it gives you an opportunity to kind of, you know, ABCD is all about looking at things from a strengths-based approach. So if you look at the strengths of three to five people, it really makes that, you know, so much stronger. And one thing we found um, moving to this cluster approach was something that we actually changed after the first offering because people came into the program basically as individuals and they found it it was challenging to kind of explain to people some of these different concepts and some of the tools and different things. And they said, you know, if, if I could have had a couple of people with me, I feel I would have been able to make an impact and have been able to kind of jump in with, with both feet a little more quickly. And so we kind of moved to this cohort model uh, and it seems to be working really well. And it allows you to kind of play to the strengths as well of, of the people in your, in within your cohort to be able to just, you know, just make what you're doing even more, meaningful and, and look at things from a different perspective. So that's kind of why we're, we're move, moved to that. Um, we've moved to that three to five kind of model.
we are at our time. Um, I will say this, if you have uh, other questions or anything, uh, you know, that you uh, want to talk a little bit more about, uh, you saw that info at gmis.ca. I'm more than happy to respond via email or via phone. Uh, you know, if you want us to give you a, a shout, just put your phone number in there and we will we'll reach out to you. But um, Nora, I'll let you close off and, and thank you everyone for, for your time this morning. Yeah, I don't have too much more to add. Thanks everyone for taking a little bit of time. I hope this helped to give you a little bit more uh, background information. And as Jonathan said, if you do have other questions, feel free to reach out. Info at gmis.ca is the best uh, email. I think Wellington also shared his. If you have questions about ABCD and, and other learning opportunities related to that. So, um, you know, we're, we're relatively easy to reach. So reach out if you do have questions. And uh, we hope that we'll see some of your applications come through. If uh, you do want to share this with some colleagues or maybe other communities that you think might be interested, we are going to post a recording on our website on that same Activate uh, page. So you'll be able to find it fairly easy. So feel free to share that as well. So for now, thanks so much. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you.